Hey Scott, do you want to Get play a game? Get the freaking Whopper! Thermonuclear warfare game! Heck yeah! I'll play this game! <laughs> Who is the funniest OBS creator oh. on YouTube? Oh, no, that's easy! That's me, yo! I've been doing this forever! I'm the funniest guy! Are you sure? Of course I'm sure I'm the funniest guy! Come on! Absolutely! Wrong. It is not. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know. Look, it just comes up into my head. I visualize this stuff and I produce it. It just comes into my brain. Don't prosecute me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Regardless, we're going to learn how to create that very teletype effect that you saw in the demonstration with a Lewis script. It'll work beautifully in your live stream with OBS Studio. Let's get some. Electrify your online presence with live, live streaming. streaming. Finding and installing this Lewis script is dead simple. Google the words teletype news tickle. Tickle. <laughs> no, not tickle. Teletype news ticker <laughs> OBS Studio, and you'll find it no problem. I'll put a link in the description as well so you can find it that way. Once you get here, click the white downloads button, and it will instantly prompt you to download the actual Lua script. It's kind of refreshing because there's no other web pages or no zip files. You just get the script. It's great. So download that to your computer. And once you have it on your computer, then it comes time to move it in the right location into OBS Studio so that it can be referenced easily. And the path for that location is easily found by going into OBS and clicking Tools and clicking the subchoice of Scripts and then hitting the plus sign and you'll get that path. Program Files subfolder OBS-Studio, subfolder Data, subfolder OBS-Plugins, subfolder Front End Tools, and finally, subfolder Scripts. And that's where all the default Lewis scripts should reside so you can access them easily. This Lewis script is going to look for a text file and use the text in that file to display. Every single line will have its own teletype animation. So let's open up a text file right now, and I just want to explain something to you in regards to the character length. So for example, if I just typed hello in the first line and then hit the return key and then type the following, this is Scott Fichter. I hope you are enjoying the show, right? Whoops. What happens here is that you may try to resize the animation based on the word hello, so you try to make the hello larger, but then when it reads the second line, because there are so many characters in that second line, that line will be off the screen as it scrolls along in your animation. So you've got to be cognizant of how many characters are used per each line. You want to try to keep that number of characters at a similar number so that the length of the text is similar per line. So I went back and modified the text, and this is what I'm talking about. See how each line is similar in width based on the characters? That's what you should be shooting for. Cool. Save that text file to a place that you remember on your computer and let's move on. I'll show you the text source. If I go into OBS Studio here, uh, hit the plus sign, select text GDI, name it anything you want. I've already done it here. It's called CT on my computer. So if I double click it to show you the properties here, I used a font called BP dots minus. It's commercial free. You can find it anywhere on the internet. Uh, here's one here I found for you. I'll put this link in the description for you. It's called BP Tots Minus on allfont.net. So feel free to install that on your computer. I thought it looked like an old computer font, which was cool. And I think it works. I use that funky green color as well. And that's all you need to do really with the properties on the text source. Okay, let's check out some of the cool parameters with this Lewis script. Let's go to tools, scripts. We'll hit the plus sign. We'll load the script. It's called teletype lower score news lower score ticker dot LUA. I'll select it, hit open. And on the right hand side, you begin to see all the cool parameters that are available with the script. The text source pull down actually is not a pull down, it doesn't have that kind of power yet. So you have to manually type in the name of your text source that you created. Mine is called CT. So I'll just type in the letters C and T. Next thing you got to do is designate the text file with all the text in it, right, that you created. I'm going to select Browse and go up to Downloads and go to my Teletype folder. And there it is right there, the text.txt. Hit Open. Now, as soon as you select that text file, you will see the animation appear in your scene. 
Let's go down to the next thing. It says, when EOF is reached, reload the file. I think it's a good idea to check this off because what it means is as it reads the last line in the text file, it's going to reload the text file with the assumption that you may update the text file during your live stream. So that's a good thing to check off. The teletype delay, I think, means the speed by which the animation occurs. I've had limited to no success with making changes to that parameter, so I just leave it at one. The full line display time means that after a single line is visual, it pauses until it shows the next line. So that may be useful for you. Currently, I have it set to 10, but I'm going to set it to one so you can see it change pretty fast here. And it does with no problem. The line prefix characters simply means that it allows for some characters to show up before the line. So I'll type in hello with a dash and you can see it appear right there. The last three parameters pertain to what shows up on the right hand side of the animation. And let me show you what I'm talking about. I'll make this screen a little bit larger so we can see what happens here. Okay. So if I check off use cursor trailer character right here and then type in any character that I want, it will show up on the right-hand side. I'm gonna use a dash because that's the way the old school computers used to work. There you go, see the dash appear? It will also accept other wacky characters like, for example, I could put a soccer ball in there, check that out. So it'll take just about anything. Now, if I check off below the randomized cursor character, they both have to be checked off for this to occur. It randomizes a character at the end, which is really cool. <laughs> now, I don't know if you realized it or not, but the demonstration that I provided where that Whopper computer was talking, that was my voice. I stumbled on this website that has no registration, no nothing. It's absolutely solid free, right? You just go there and start playing with it. All you have to do is connect your microphone to this thing, talk into your mic, and it provides almost 40 effects that you can apply to your microphone or any other file that you upload to it. It's got stuff like Ottawa, vocoder, ring modulator, all kinds of robot effects, megaphone, dystopian public announcement, ghost, which is like a reverse effect kind of thing, telephone, wobble, anonymous distorter. You know, like in the news where you see the guy that's been backlit, you can't see his, you know, his color or his face, and it's just like this weird voice. It has one of those. Giant monster, astronaut, evil robot, bi-quad frequency filter, overdrive distortions, Chorus, Delay, Compressor, Wawa, Bit Crusher, Moog Filter, and a Randomizer. So this thing is super cool. I'm going to talk about it in my next video. You can check it out right here. I will see you over there. Best wishes to you. Stay strong and keep fighting. Peace. Stay strong and keep fighting.